I'm terribly sorry to break into your televisual viewing this evening. My name is Neil Sean and I'm beaming to you live from London's Westminster Live Television News Studios. We're getting reports here into the studio that there's riotous laughter and anarchy taking place in the heart of London. Piccadilly Circus to be in fact. At the Criterion Theatre, which is home, of course, to the wonderful comedy, The 39 Steps. Without further ado, and thanks to our outside broadcast unit, let's go meet the cast of The 39 Steps. Thank you. John Hopkins playing Richard Hannay. Stephen Critchlow playing uh, Salesman Milkman and Professor Jordan. Stephen Ventura playing uh, Mrs. Jordan, uh, Mrs. Higgins, uh, Mrs. McGarrigal and uh, a salesman of lingerie. Uh, Grace Thurgood and I play Pamela, um, Annabella and Margaret. Bless Grace, you had to try and remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. Now, let me it's ask you, as Richard Hannett in this wonderful comedy, which I saw recently. Thank you. Uh, absolutely hilarious, but you work incredibly hard in it. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of relative, uh, shall we say, in today's society, of that he's sort of going through a stressful time, he's looking for something exciting in his life. He does, he's a thrill seeker. He's a 1930s, instead of lycra, he's wearing tweed. But <laughs> other than that, he's essentially bungee jumping through the play, um, white water rafting. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's got that thing that we all have, which is a sense of, um, he's got, he seems to have everything, but he has nothing, and he has a sense of uncertainty. So he seeks out adventure and exciting women, and men who dress as women, um, <laughs> and his life improves immeasurably <clears throat> after that experience. Now, you will be described, of course, in the uh, comedy as a dashing good sort of find, as it were. You're very good looking man. That's, uh, that's <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> and uh, and of course the now. women in the audience love you and there's, there's a real sort no, of... No, they don't. Well, there's a real power that I they mean, want you to succeed <laughs> and, and all that sort of stuff. If they sit if they sit more than six rows from the back, they see <laughs> uh, the breathtaking levels of sweat. They get hit by all kinds of liquids coming off me. It's the, it's the hardest, most exhausting, muckiest show ever. And the, and the costume is dripping and drenched uh, by the interval. So I, th I think I'm a lot less attractive than you might otherwise have <laughs> considered it to be. But yeah, it's nice to have the audience on your side and, um, and you're sort of on stage all the time. So they, they have to, if, if they don't like you, it's a really long evening for them and a really long <laughs> evening for you. <laughs> so they have to kind of go for you and, you have, and they have to kind of, as well as being a comedy, they have to really believe in your adventure and want you to succeed. Biscuit. Much obliged. Biscuit. No, thank you. Suit yourself. <laughs> Did you know, obviously, of the film? Uh, the, you know, the, there's been a few film versions, but before that, and when they presented this comic version to you and the many roles that you have to do, yeah, what was that? You know, like you're thinking, Ooh, well, I, I must admit, I'm a Hitchcock fan, but I hadn't seen the, the 39 Steps, the original 1935. My favourite's North by Northwest. I think everyone has their own favourite, yeah. like Rope or Vertigo, and we try and get references to it throughout the show, and uh, I think it's. Uh, I always put it like, it's like stepping on a speeding train at the beginning of the evening, you can get off at the end and you haven't got time, if you mess up you haven't got time to dwell on it because you've got to move on, you know, and it's, a, it's got a great kind of party feel about it. And so you do one character, you run up to it, do it the best you can and let it go and move on to the next one. And we, we, I think the most, any of us, Steve and I are off stage is about ten minutes. The rest of the time we're running around, he's dressed as women all the time and putting on different hats and things. It's, uh, it's, it's hysterical. It's wonderful. Let's talk about you dressed as women, because you look very Shall cool. We? Actually, it has I to be I need professional help, it has to be said. <laughs> um, you know, the characters that you, you're, you're playing, uh, uh, mm. they're kind of, um, shall we say, uh, oh, you know, Englandy sort of people, like Scottishy, that we are very caricature sort of things. Where did you find the character for those? Um, well, I did lots and lots of in-depth research. <laughs> <laughs> I've, never, I've never been so insulted in my life. <laughs> um, no, I, um, I went to the toilet, thought about it a bit, and then uh, came up with a voice that uh, seemed to kind of fit um, with the with the script. The script, um, the thing about the script, more sort of honestly, um, Patrick Barlow has written something that's. Uh, loaded with very rich kind of language rhythms and um, and he's tapping into a sort of film um, black and white film thriller tradition that we'd all sort of recognize we don't and, Hi and Hitchcock absolutely begin belongs in in the center of that good heavens place is stiff with police excuse me constable caught the West End murderer yet we'll catch him don't you worry sir that's the spirit all aboard for the Highlands Anything suspicious, let us know, sir. Oh, yes, don't you worry, Constable. Next stop, the Highlands! 
So, um, so the characters are all drawn from those, you know, people like the tea lady in, cl in um, Brief Baker. Encounter who says, yeah. you know, try pulling your alley down and blowing your nose. Uh, they, they think pe these people, these characters, these sort of working class and upper class characters who, who recur in, in British sort of film masterpieces over the years. And um, what he's done is he's lifted them and kind of exploded them into, onto, onto, into a, a sort of a huge um, set of caricatures who um, kind of keep the pace of the keep the pace and the rhythm and the sort of liveliness and the colour colourfulness of the of the story going. Um, and each of the characters is a very big character, so you have to make a fast uh, decision um, from an acting standpoint about how you're going to portray them. And that pays off because the the as Steve said, the show doesn't stand still for a second. Peeper, 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 evening peeper. I say, do you speak English? Peeper, peeper, evening peeper. Can I have an evening paper, please? Thank you. Peeper, peeper, evening peeper, 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 evening peeper, 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 evening. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 Hello. Hello. Good lord. What is it? There's been a woman murdered in a fashionable West End flat. All these sex dramas don't appeal to me. Great. I have to say, uh, you do have. Uh, I mean, you can say every girl's dream, really. You get him. Uh, and then, of course, you get to play so many different sort of yeah. characters. Vampy, uh, very Marlene Dietrichy, you know, and, and nobody... The thing that I found was that um, when you are handcuffed to Jack... Yes. Nobody <laughs> quite believes that you don't quite like him. Well, she does. She does like him. But, um, you know, she, she's not quite sure what to make of him. And um, I think she's, she's a very dignified... Um, lady in a very undignified situation. I think that's where a lot of the comedy comes from. Um, but she, she, she's rather confused by him because straight as soon as she sees him, she's completely enamoured with him. But um, she's led to believe that he's a murderer, and she's a very proper uh, girl, so she wants to do the right thing. So I think she's torn all the time between her attraction with him and also doing the right thing by because obviously, um, you know, she thinks that. He's, be, he's on the run from the police and she, she needs to um, uh, fess him up, yeah. so... Um, That's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Fess him up. No. <laughs> Just the wire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so that's, I think that's where a lot of the, the, lot of the comedy comes from. Sorry to disturb you. Have you seen this man? His name's Richard Hannay. Excuse me, please. Sorry to disturb you. Have you seen this man? His name is Richard Hannay. Darling, how wonderful to see you. As a gorgeous Jack, uh, not only are you debonair, attractive, and uh, attached to this beautiful lady, mm -hmm. but um, I'm amazed that um, it's loving it. Yes, I can't it. It's not <laughs> have to fit back in the car. It's gone uh, so well as well, uh, uh, on Broadway at the Helen Hayes Theatre. I mean, it's, it's a such hard a job British to do both at the same thing. Time. <laughs> you know, it's a British <laughs> hell of a community thing, yeah. isn't it? And, and yet they, they love it. They so love it. Is that because of the Britishness? <laughs> it's the Britishness, and it's because it, it taps into a certain kind of cinema. Anyone who's ever sat in front of a television on a wet Sunday afternoon has, has seen these films, these type of films, um, and it and it. And it, it, it lands right in that world, and it's in love with that world, and it sends it up, but it honours it all at the same time. The world in which people speak slightly quicker than we do here. Mm -hmm. um, the world in which everything is tripped, everything is, everything is delicate. And also, um, in, in a sort of 21st century, touchy-feely, everyone's very emotional world, I think there's something about the stiff upper lip, about a backbone, about people who keep their feelings in check, mm -hmm. um, and who are very heroic, but don't really uh, express a great deal, which uh, appeals to people. It's a simpler time. Um, and it's just, it's just funny as well. There's lots of funny voices. I'm glad you said the simpler time because I want to ask you all individually if you could travel back in time to that period in the 30s, mm. considering we now live in 2009 and we've got everything at our disposal mobiles, whatever, iPhones, you know, do you think, uh, what is the thing that you would miss most if you were living in that time? And is there a bonus to living in that time? And we'll start with, say, you. Oh, I say. Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What would I miss the most? Actually, I'm a chronic asthmatic. I'd probably be dead. I probably wouldn't have <laughs> yeah, made it beyond the age of five. Yeah. It's a rather maudlin choice. But uh, let's be honest. Let's think, let's think about the downsides. The plus sides, um, you, like, you could just drive a car anywhere. There weren't, as far as I can tell, any police on the roads. You could do anything. You could yeah. just, yeah, it was brilliant. Um, and, uh, 
and it was I think it was just a, a great deal a great deal more freedom and liberty the 1930s as well of course the whole world was sort of partying having come out of one war and on the on the tap dancing on the brink of another one so I think it was a very exciting time and it would probably I'd probably get more work as an actor I think because of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and also do you like the fact that you know men of that time were dressed Impeccably. Mm. Even if you were not rich, you, people still dressed well. Really. People dressed well. There was there, yeah. there was there was there was. It's the arrival of denim again. We can blame the Americans. <laughs> um, it's the arrival of denim. But yeah, people. Everyone wore. You know, people went to do manual labour in a shirt, in shirt sleeves and a tie. Um, and I think that that uh, level of sort of respect um, had a process of osmosis on the whole of society. Society stood up a bit more. I liked all that. It's fun. We, you should come and see the 39 Steps, the Criterion, because it's a rip-roaring British comedy uh, with more laughs per minute than any other show on the West End at the moment. That's guaranteed from me. You'll have a bore the time of your life. Kids from 8 to 80 have all laughed and really yeah. enjoyed it. Mm. So come along. Um, if you want to hear a, a repertoire of really funny laughs, come and sit in the auditorium, because in the dark, people make <laughs> really strange noises, and that's what makes me laugh at that. <laughs> It's true, they do. And um, I think that because it's a show for everyone, you know, you can bring your, your grandparents and your grandchildren, the whole family. It really is a, a family show and everyone that comes raves about it. If you, if you miss, miss it, it you'll miss, miss out! out. <laughs>